Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, we're so excited at Scale Venture Partners to be here with Trendalytics. It's uh, Kate Mitchell. I'm a partner at Scale Ventures here in Silicon Valley. And Sharon Weinbar, also a partner here. And uh, we have a lot. We're very interested in the whole area of digital marketing. We've done quite a bit of investing in that space. Sharon, in particular, has had an emphasis uh, and expertise in e-commerce. So you're right in the sector that we're really interested in. Um, so you're, you've done all the right things. You have a great background. We heard in the last precast, um, you know, what you're doing. You're in beta with your, with your customers. Um, you are building out your team. You have great sector expertise here. And I think now the question might be how, where from here in terms of go to market, but this is really an opportunity for us to answer your question. So, what can we help you with as you're sort of facing the next months and, and quarters ahead? Well, thank you. First of all, thanks for taking the time. And I'm really excited to speak with you because you have such great experience in working with a number of portfolio companies like Exact Target that have seen and really seen them through the beginnings to scaling. And so um, I think it will be really valuable to get your insights and best practices as you know, we're, you know, the landscape is changing quite a bit. And, you know, for us moving from our early stages and throughout our cycle, like um, any best practices we can lean on would be, you know, really, really helpful. Luckily, we've been um, designing our product with a number of customers and um, or potential customers. And now um, we're really starting to get traction with people where they want to move to the next steps. And, you know, as a startup, we're formalizing our processes and as we're starting to scale both employees and also our process, um, we're starting to think about how we formalize that and, you know, what our needs will be, you know, as an early stage startup to how we start to think about planning going forward. In a lot of ways, our product insights and um, the product innovations have come as a result of feedback from customers. Right, so I think in the phase that you're in, I would say don't worry too much about scaling your team yet because what you want to do is spend a lot of time listening to your customers. And to, to make the product, you probably spent a lot of time listening to the customers about the feature functionality kinds of things. And now as you take that early version of the product more broadly than, than your alpha and beta partner customers and you try and sell it commercially to more customers, listening is the most important part of the sales cycle because you're listening both for what are the th what are the, the things that you say about the, their need the product the the, the, the whole product too not just the technology but all the services that you might deliver with it and which of those things do, makes their eyes light up and moves the sales cycle along and which of those things makes them kind of lean back in their chair and disengage because two things Early, early stage startups to get traction with customers, you have to be able to do two things. One is find the customers with whom your product really resonates so you can spend time with them. And you also have to be able to figure out early on who to stop selling to. So there are some customers you might think are perfect prospects for you, but there's a reason why they're just not going to buy it from you right now. And you want to cut your losses early with those prospects so that you can put your time on the ones who can buy your product, give you money, and be engaged with you as you try and scale. So that's that kind of that sort of early, you know, proving out the, the transition from minimally viable product to early in scaling. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting um, listening, first of all, to the word scale. That's a phase we like in companies. So you're hitting kind of our sweet spot. And I think, you know, there's a classic um, book you can look for. Um, I think it's actually, you're a Harvard Business School graduate. I think HBS is the publisher. It's Mark Leslie is the author who teaches at Stanford as well, former CEO of a company called Veritas, called The Sales Learning Curve. And what he says, this phase is all, you're not focused on efficiency, as Sharon says. You're focused on trying to learn about product, which you already are how to improve what you're delivering to them, you're also learning how to sell to them. So I wouldn't worry as much about staffing and efficiency because this ear to the wall and listening to what they're telling you, and in particular on the sales side, listen to what the case is being, how the case is being made internally. What, what are they finding, maybe even surprised, 
by what's impacting them the most. So then you know in that next customer, that's the business case you make to them going in. This is how you're going to get your ROI going forward. So I think you should think of this as an extension of your engineering. This is R&D or product development and in essence sales development by sitting next to your client. So I think it's very valuable. You look at companies like Intuit. They early on had the follow me home, you know, follow their consumer customers in that case home to see how they were using their service. So don't be concerned about being overstaffed in this regard. I think this is incredibly valuable. As you transition out of this, you'll start to think about now, how can I sell it more profitably? You want to be able to sell it repeatedly. Then you care about selling it profitably. And that's how you begin to, to move up the sales learning curve. But I think you're in exactly the right place. You have the right expertise. But again, listen for two things, what they think about the product and then what, as Sharon pointed out, what are their hot buttons and what business case would they be making to their boss to go and get allocation in the budget to support you know, buying this going forward? And then have you thought about sales? I mean, at this stage, you're probably the chief salesperson, I would think. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I think it's important because uh, there needs to be such a close tie to that and product because, I mean, really, we'll always – and I kind of would love to keep it that way where we're always getting feedback and working closely with our partners where it's not just like a sales team. And even when the product's mature, I feel, in enterprise software, especially – not only what's happening, the shift, the transformational shift that's happening in business analytics, but also the industry itself is going through a fundamental paradigm shift. And I feel that there will always be a constant innovation curve, and we always kind of want to be a company that thinks ahead and works closely. And so it's interesting because I feel like when you talk to a lot of um, institutional investors, there's always this element of, you know, obviously now we're doing the right things by um, investing a lot of time, but a lot of people ask about our future cost structure and what kind of team we need to support a lot of the bigger retailers that we're talking to. But I almost, I, I wonder whether if there's like a shift in thinking in terms of the right balance there, because if you have a really strong support team, then it's always gathering insights and um, kind of continuing to evolve with the customers. And I wonder if there's like what your thoughts are on if there's like a right balance there. Let me translate what those institutional investors are asking you. They're asking you, what is your, what's the business model of Trendalytics going to be at steady state? So what's your target um, operating P&L look like? And how much of the business is going to be so high gross margin software? And how much of the business is going to be people driven services around um, implementation or consulting? Because so. For example, we're, I'm just right now looking at a, um, at a prospective investment that's a, a large company that has a lot of software, but then coming along with the software are a lot of people-based systems. So where the software has an 82% gross margin, it's associated with, an, with a very large amount of implementation and ongoing consulting services, and they have a 32% gross margin. So overall, the company has a kind of crummy gross margin for what it's, it's trying to present itself as a software company, but it's really a blend of software and market research. Mm -hmm. And in particular, market research space is very heavy on um, consulting services associated with any kind of technology that goes into it. And consequently, those companies trade at a much lower multiple. So that's what those institutional investors are asking. Are you going to look more like a market research company that trades more like one or two times revenue? Or are you going to be a high gross margin, high growth software company that trades at, you know, four to eight times revenue? Yeah, and I think, you know, basically the way to think about it right now, you're sampling 100% of your client base with, with respect to services and listening carefully, you should. Um, as you grow, that's going to decrease over time. Your sampling rate is going to be perhaps 10%. You're going to know them better. That said, the best companies are ones that are very customer centric. They stay close, and you're absolutely right. Analytics is evolving, the fashion industry is evolving, digital marketing is evolving, you know, broadly defined. So you should be listening, and companies are always measured on what a lot of folks call the freshness index, um, how close they are in the recent releases they have of their products. So you'll always listen. It will just become a smaller ratio of what you do over time. Mm -hmm. Karen, we wish you the very best of luck. And by the way, I think one of the trends we can identify is blue is big, maybe through light blue. <laughs> right, right, right. We are all brand compliant. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks, Karen, for everything, and we look forward to catching up offline. <laughs> Love it. Great. Thanks so much.